In this lecture, we are going to cover how the test process varies with respect to context. The learning objective here is to explain the impact of context on the test process. It is marked as K2. Before we start the topic, just remember the ISO standard for the test process is ISO IEC IEEE 29119-2. The detailed test process is explained in this ISO document. Contextual factors that influence the test process for an organization are software development lifecycle model and project methodologies being used, test levels and test types being considered, product and project risks, business domain, operational constraints, organizational policies and practices, required internal and external standards. Now we will cover each of them in detail. The first context is based on software development lifecycle models and project methodologies being used. To understand this point, let's have a look into these two software development lifecycle models. V-Model and Agile Model V-Model is an incremental process where all the phases are done sequentially in an incremental way. However, in an Agile model, each phase is repeated throughout the development phase. We can see a picture to understand these two processes. In the V-Model, the complete project is implemented incrementally, and once the development phase is done, the corresponding testing activity is started. Whereas in the Agile method, few features are implemented in a week, and testing is done for that feature, and this repeats throughout the project development. Therefore, the same test process is implemented differently based on the model used. Remember, the first context is software development lifecycle model and project methodologies being used. The second context is test level and test type being considered. Based on the test level and test type, the test process is selected. When we say test level, these are the four different levels mentioned in this course. Component testing, integration testing system, and acceptance testing. The different test types are functional test types, unfunctional test types, white box testing, and change-related testing. Each of these will be covered in the upcoming lectures. Remember the second context is test level and test type. The third context is product and project risk. Let's take an example of two different products, automotive and avionic. By seeing the project, you will come to know which has more risk. Avionics products contain more risk than automotive. Therefore, the test process will be more regress for a product with more risk. Remember the third context is product and project risk. The fourth context is the business domain, which is similar to the last context, product and project risk. To understand this, let's see two different domains, software for supermarket billing and software for banking. Supermarket software will be more focused on load testing, whereas banking software will be tested with more respect to safety aspects. The fourth context is the business domain. The fifth context is based on operational constraints. For example, budget and resource mean if assigned budget is less or sufficient to complete the project. Time scale means whether you need to complete the project in less time or you have sufficient time. Complexity means if the product selected is complex to implement. And the last one is contractual and regulatory requirements. Sometimes, along with the customer's requirement, we also need to fulfill industry-related requirements. Like for automotive safety, we need to fulfill ISO 26262 standards. Remember the fifth context is operational constraints. The sixth context is organizational policies and practices. 
The type of development model used has an impact on the test planning and test process. Similarly, the type of test strategy, test techniques, and tools used in an organization influences test process. Remember the sixth context is organizational policies and practices. The last context requires internal and external standards. As mentioned before, ISO 26262 is a safety standard for the automotive industry. It's an external standard which organizations have to follow if they are working in the automotive industry and need to be included in the test process. ASPICE is another standard which is related to the process. If an organization needs to comply with the ASPICE standard, they have to adapt their process in accordance with ASPICE. Remember the seventh context is required internal and external standards. Now let's quickly summarize all the points we mentioned with respect to context. Contextual factors that influence the test process for an organization includes software development lifecycle model and project methodologies being used, test levels and test types being considered, product and project risks, business domain, operational constraints, including but not limited to, budgets and resources, time scales, complexity, contractual and regulatory requirements, organizational policies and practices, required internal and external standards.